Hi, everyone. Great to see you again. Um, it's been a while, so we appreciate uh, you guys joining in on a Tuesday. Um, it's, you know, pretty typical that we do this on a Friday just because everybody likes to go out and, you know, relax for a little bit afterwards after we've done the lift to get to here. Um, but we're going on uh, CNBC tomorrow. I just uh, got off with those folks on prep. So really appreciate um, them putting us on and, and, you know, including Humble as a as a startup technology company and, and everything we're doing. So, um, so we're having it on a Tuesday and, and hopefully everybody can join us uh, uh, here today. So um, as usual, we just put the safe harbor statement up uh, just so everybody can read it and hopefully you've had enough time to do so. Um, okay, welcome to shareholder call number four of Humble. Uh, the theme this week at Humble was jump into the fire. So there's a show that I'm watching, you know, for about an hour a night on Netflix and they have this scene where, you know, the characters are kind of feeling like they're, um, you know, getting uh, uncomfortable. And so much of what you do in life is becoming comfortable, getting uncomfortable. And um, so I, I told everybody, you know, at Humble this week, when we do our Monday meetings at 10 a.m. and it started to be two, two slides worth of people on Zoom that uh, you could just kind of tell we're entering a new new phase of the business. So boat one fits, fits all on one, one Zoom uh, meeting on Mondays at 10 a.m. And now we're, um, you know, we're more than that. So I think we're up to about 35 or 40 people here at the business. And I just told them, you know, we're gonna have to press into, you know, a new phase of our business. As, as I said to all of you, you know, we, we hope to do the crawl, walk, run thing at, at pace, but that, that's what we have to do as a, as a new technology startup. And, um, so our theme this week at the business has been, you know, launch product, get out there, fix problems, and and try to serve the the customer. So uh, that's the theme this week, and and we'll we'll get into it here. So again, for those of you who are new, I know we have a lot of new people joining us because of the CNBC uh, coverage today. Um, we're humble. We're building a Web3 blockchain platform for the digital economy. So we see a lot of lines of business and, and the millennial and the Gen Z consumer migrating to digital environments. And we think um, Humble can build out an Amazon for assets that provides people with touch points to be able to, to connect better across a continuum of, of blockchain technologies. And, and we'll talk more about tokenization and what that means for um, pairing up, you know, formally disparate uh, types of behavior and things like payment or um, buy sell list behaviors and content and how tokenization can create un uniformity between um, you know not only asset classes but people to be able to to improve you know, markets and the breadth of how we're able to pay and track and trade so that's been our vision from day one uh, we're building it here at humble and I'll give you all some detail as our shareholders of of what we're doing so the mission of what we're building for the decades ahead is to try to create an environment where creators, you know, whether you're an athlete, an artist, uh, an entertainer, a uh, digital designer, can connect with consumers and merchants in the digital economy. So you saw that before in other, other cycles of the web in the late 90s with, with the dot coms, and we see that same opportunity to simplify um, technologies like blockchain for the mid market here at Humble. So the three ways we're doing that are through Humble Pay. Humble Marketplace and Humble Financial. Um, you know, we went and studied the Alipay business model in China. And of course they're using different technologies, but they moved with great pace by installing their pay uh, programs at merchants quickly um, and skipping the hardware layer. Uh, they got the app into the palm of consumers for point and pay uh, types of behaviors and other app plugins. So we learned quickly from that. Um, of course, the Alibaba Marketplace specializes in soft lines and and hard goods, um, we are focused on being an Amazon for digital assets. And I'll get more into that, you know, as we go through the call. Uh, and then lastly, Humble Financial, which again is also an environment for the purchase and investment of assets um, through software solutions that, that we've developed and that we hope to move to uh, more custodial types of frameworks over time. So our thesis is that we can synthesize th these three things into one platform for the consumer uh, in the decades ahead and that um, sort of the idea that has been blockchain can be galvanized 
um, for the consumer in palm of hand and in one click if we execute on these pieces of the business. So um, as we jump into the fire to roll out to roll out product, that's that's what we're doing. So um, what we've built at Humble in this sense is the ability to rapidly migrate to the digital economy. Um, so that's picking up your cell phone, that's being a merchant that can perhaps take a credit card where they couldn't before uh, from a traveling consumer or a, or a domestic consumer. Um, you know, it's, it's being able to invest in digital assets in one click in a way that you weren't able to before or in uh, market uh, capacities that you didn't get to participate in uh, due to complexities or friction. So we're trying to reduce all those things and give people really simple tools to migrate to the digital economy in the years ahead. Um, we recently have started launching product lines and uh, at the end of the call today, I'll give you all um, our launch dates for all three vectors of our business. Um, but really what I'm most proud of about what we're doing is, you know, we were, we were the guys in the room at, you know, South by Southwest with, you know, couldn't, couldn't fill a seat to talk about blockchain, you know, and, and now here we are a, a few years later and I, I, you know, my phone has not stopped ringing about NFTs or, you know, these kinds of things that are becoming tokenized at great pace um, and for which the consumer needs them simplified and packaged in the ways that um, the FANG stocks did on preceding technology uh, platforms. So that's what we're doing. It's a really simple idea. Um, and we're just really focused on these three verticals that again, we see silo busting over time into one synthetic platform. So we thank you all who signed up for our ETXs, um, you know, a couple of weeks ago, trial by fire. Um, you know, we, we are not um, fully there yet on this product line in the sense that, you know, we're tracking our customer service tickets. We know what we need to improve. So please keep the feedback coming on that, you know, um, launching complex technologies with 25,000 lines of code is never easy. So I really appreciate you know, both our front of house and back of house people that are that are working to make this product line a go. I think um, part of this was a demonstration to uh, the market that we could package complex technologies in simpler ways for the customer. Um, it's not where we wanna be yet. Um, in blockchain, there's sort of these capacities that are called either non-custodial or custodial, meaning you're handling the asset for the customer. Um, and when we get into the financial section, I'll, I'll talk a little bit more about our hope for this, which is to create a true one-click buy and sell um, or list environment at Humble, which we think has um, really tremendous capacity as a, as, a, as a behavior for consumers. So I'll talk a little bit more about that and, and what we have on the roadmap to move really quickly to get you into one-click environments for this stuff. Um, we're getting some good press coverage. So again, thanks to Yahoo, uh, thanks to Entrepreneur, um, thanks to Forbes, and uh, tomorrow, thanks to CNBC for having us on. That's just been a great outfit to work with and get prepped with. You know, um, as as you jump in the fire, you say, okay, um, you know, I, I always knew I would be on CNBC talking about an Amazon for asset for digital assets, but I just didn't know it would be. You know, hey, can you get on tomorrow and talk about this and send us some assets and things? So. Um, they owe me a couple of nights of sleep, but we're ready to go. And we really appreciate the opportunity to talk about what we're, what we're building at Humble. So if I was to take one slide in with me to present our business, um, this would be it. You know, I think I can actually um, define entirely what we need to do on a placemat with this, um, with this slide. You know, it's, it's about taking blockchain and distilling them down into these blocks, right? These units of measure blocks that will enable you to create this continuum of trade, track, list, pay, exchange in cheaper and more synthetic ways. Um, so our whole goal at Humble is to create a platform where you can come in and invest in one click in digital assets. You can list or buy an NFT um, or you can pay someone uh, next door or around the world. And the, um, the wrapper that is tokenization um, and authenticated encryption is, is really a unique opportunity to do that. Um, you have this sort of, you know, um, the cycle where we came through hard coins, paper bills, uh, plastic swipe cards, and now, you know, um, soft goods and, um, you know, uh, uh, hard goods can all be tokenized in ways that are more um, exchangeable for people and more, um, 
you know, more provable to, to the buyer. So it's a really unique opportunity, I think, for us, for someone to step in and, and do this in a capacity that's beyond just uh, e-commerce and, and really stepping into that true Web3 environment of read, write, and then transact. So it's going to eliminate a lot of fee layers, a lot of middlemen, um, a lot of bureau bureaucratic um, environments, but it's going to be, so it'll be a little bit gnashing, but, um, and there's regulatory and compliance complexities there that you have to navigate. But, you know, I think as a true state, if we can get to this where the customer knows that when they come to Humble, they can pay someone, they can invest in an asset, they can list an asset, it's going to create the same um, level of behavior that Amazon did in e-commerce for, you know, order a package, get it to your door. Uh, we want to do the same thing as an Amazon for assets. Uh, so that's what we're building uh, here at Humble. And, and this is the slide that we have to get done in order to do that uh, for us and for our, for our shareholders and customers. Okay, I'm going to break it down by division uh, so everybody can see kind of where we're at. Um, the three sort of emerging vectors that we see uh, for for service are consumers, freelancers, and merchants, meaning millennial Gen Z customer, much more fluid, you know, brick and mortar has been challenged both by um, Amazon and by COVID. Um, so you see some shrink there in the brick and mortar footprint. And we think the, the next generation merchant wants to get paid wherever they are. Um, and that Humble can help them do that um, through the presentation of a, of a QR code, the listing of a business, um, the mapping and discovery of that business. Um, and taking payment in a more uh, elastic way than, than you did before at the storefront. So the world's changing and we wanna help people migrate successfully to that digital economy and give them really simple, you know, easy to understand tools to get there. The way we're, we're building that is across different modalities. So I really have to hand it to Javier and the many guys on our tech team, um, both, you know, from a blockchain perspective, but then just sort of a, um, an architectural perspective about how they're thinking through this. Like I, I call this the travel plug-in model where, you know, sometimes you go to a country and you don't have the proper um, power adapter. So um, this is what we're trying to build where if you get off an airplane or you live in a place, Humble needs to look different for you um, in a mobile capacity than it does in another country. You know, like I think we're um, pretty well served in the United States and China um, in a lot of capacities as it pertains to modern point of sale systems. Um, but, you know, you get out there and you start seeing the world a little bit, which we did a lot of before we built Humble, thankfully. Um, and, you know, you get input from people that you meet and friends you make and, and you kind of walk into different environments and see, see what they need. Um, and I think, you know, this will solve a lot of market problems that we're seeing out there if we can, if we can get this into the market, you know. There are still many countries that are over, you know, 50 to 75 percent um, cash, meaning paper bills or hard coin dependent for commerce. And we just don't just don't see that as a sustainable means of joining um, the modern economy. And we want to make sure that, you know, you don't gap out there. UN 2030, you know, talks about that a lot where, you know, you don't want certain countries, you know, moving faster and adopting uh, technology faster than than others or you you get this extreme disparity and um, wealth distribution and tech distribution and all that sort of stuff. So we've tried to make Humble, you know, easy to pick up, easy to use, will cost it accordingly based on the countries we're going into um, and try to build in some um, consumer, um, you know, behaviors that are just not out there in one place in the market. You know, when you get down into the younger generations that are sort of cradle to grave digital natives growing up with a tablet in their hands, you know, they, they don't expect to go to 50 different apps to do 50 different things or sit in a bank, bank branch for an hour to, to do something. You know, these are, these are generations and decades of customers coming through that are just different. You know, they expect everything to operate in a swipeable 360 capacity. Um, and they're very open to new asset classes and ways of um, trading and transferring and tracking and selling. So um, we intend to build an environment for them. It'll take time. You know, we, we aren't gonna do this overnight. Um, so if you want this to be built overnight, then don't invest in Humble because that's not going to happen. Um, but we are working around the clock, um, mostly because we want to get to market and serve the customer. So I would say that, um, you know, I'm very proud of our team. You would be amazed, you know, we have all these little cells around, around the country and around the world of people who are just working on, on stuff for the project. I'm just always um, honored by how hard they're working, whether I'm there or not. So 
Um, this will get done. It's going to be an amazing product. We're already uh, moving to production on um, a number of elements. Uh, in fact, the the entire left hand side, other than uh, than NFTs, will be a part of of our of our build uh, as we come out with with Humble Pay in its early iterations. You're going to have merchants, point and pay, ratings and reviews, um, some search and mapping functionalities, and then and then amazingly, they got the ticketing. Uh, business plugged in there too. So I'll share more at the end, but um, this is the the end state placemat of what we need to get done and and so on. Um, I'm still a little bit on the fence about delivery. I don't fully understand the unit economics of that. I think in some countries it works where, you know, you're in condensed environments, lots of motorbikes um, and so on. So that's probably an acquisition for us if we do it. Um, but certainly the, the three vectors on the left-hand side of the slide uh, on my left are, are going to get done and will get done well at Humble. Um, so it's a full tech stack in the sense that the funnel is served, right? You know, you go to the, the old school business classes and they talk about the customer journey and, and the happy path and the customer funnel, and that's very real, right? So we're building Humble for a search and discovery layer that, you know, you find a merchant, find an event, book a ticket. Um, we just, the, the search and discovery layer is really unlimited um, and it'll include some mapping activity as well. Once you've found the merchant, um, we don't want you to have to go to an ATM to go and pay them and get change and then fly home with these coins that you don't even know where they're from and, you know, merchants losing money and every, the only guy winning is the bank. So um, goal is to pair, and we call it point and pay for the first iteration, is to pair consumers and merchants around the world in this activity. Um, you'll, you'll see us launching in certain corridors. We'll expand really quickly. We're talking to um, amazing partners that can that can greenlight our business pretty quickly in certain territories. So um, as soon as we shake out rates and you know um, path to market together, we'll we'll expand even further than the country load that I'll present to you today. Um, and then you get down into the consumer layer. So basically, you know that's things we want to plug in like banking, credit, lending offers. You know you go to a lot of countries that we intend to uh, to go into to serve and. Um, you know, lending rates are just through the roof. It's just crazy how predatory this stuff is and uh, so on. So we're already in discussions abroad with people who, you know, want to bring down lending rates and uh, give customers easier access to credit. We all, you know, we all need it for something. Um, but it just, it's got to be, you know, calibrated properly so that the consumer or the, you know, the person who's taking down a loan can get out of that at some point and, and move on and up with what their plans are for life. Um, so that's what we're building, building at Humble. Here's kind of a sneak peek of what we're doing. Um, I challenged our team. I said, pull out every pay product and throw it out. Like just build something that's really new and different. You know, go to Shazam, go to, go to what Apple's doing, you know, and, and let's feel out, you know, Pandora. Let's, let's think about how the next generation of consumer, you know, kind of behaves and thinks and wants to appreciate product. And, and we're kind of building it from the ground up in that way. So um, humble. It's just, it, it's going to be, I think, very novel in how, how we approach this, this category. Um, you know, we, we definitely tip our hats, especially to the U S and Chinese providers that have built this category already. I mean, I, I don't have anything but positive things to say about what the previous pay providers, um, have brought to the table, but I do think there's opportunities to give the customer a fresh experience like Venmo did, um, in previous cycles by adding an emoji. Um, so we will have uh, merchant discovery, ratings and reviews, um, really dynamic behaviors that I think will be exciting for you. You know, we're, we're not going to be in every country at once. We learn, learn that lesson with the ETXs. So uh, give us a little bit of time, but we're, we're going to roll this out properly on kind of a, a curated phased rollout just so we get it right and can do it well, take feedback. You know, Javier and the tech team are super serious about getting their craft right. And, you know, I'm not going to push them any harder than I do. You know, it's, it's just, it wouldn't make sense for me to, to, to go around burning everybody out to just to get product out, you know, five days faster. So I appreciate them hanging in with me. I know we put a lot of pressure on the organization uh, to ship tech, but I'm really proud of what we're going to do. And we have a great team uh, to do it. So expect to see Humble in more places uh, more often in the coming year as the recovery cycle uh, begins. We'll do some personalized investing in financial push throughs, right? We'll, you know, accept some, some offers. We'll, we'll go out to the credit cards and the, and the lenders and try to put 
deals together that make sense for the consumer and um, try to serve you guys with stuff that would make sense for you uh, based on, you know, your initial behaviors or um, just kind of calibrating for, for people what they might, might want um, just based on rate or price or competition. So, um, so we'll be working to personalize it as well as best we can. Um, again, our end state is to try to move to digital forms of money. You know, I think you see in China, they're already moving to uh, digital versions of their dollars. And um, we think that happens in 150 other countries in the next 10 years. And Humble wants to be there to serve the customer um, and the nation to do that. So, um, you know, I think what's really critical is we went and studied the recipient point um, uh, of things like remittance and credit and lending and tokenization. And um, what you learn is that if your recipient doesn't have a smartphone or is used to going into their local hubs to, you know, pick up cash, lose, lose margin on the Forex and, and the send, and then they hand the cash back, the, the bill as a proxy back to the merchant to get a Coca-Cola, some bread, whatever they're looking to buy. Um, it's just really not a beneficial loop uh, for anybody but the provider. So um, what we're trying to do is get set up in as many outposts as possible so that when you walk into um, you know, a merchant and it says humble on the window globally, you'll be able to say, okay, cool, I can point and pay there. But more importantly, the domestic recipients of money, you know, if I'm in Utah and I'm sending money uh, to my cousin in Samoa, like if you don't have a place to spend those monies that you're receiving on your phone at the merchant layer as the recipient, then the beneficial loop of digital is broken. Um, so that's what we're trying to, to build out in, the, in, these, in these blocks of, um, of service to the customer. Um, we're going to begin global marketing campaigns here on Friday for the uh, for the mobile division. Um, you know, you'll see us going uh, after the consumer and the merchant in these environments to try to serve them uh, in in the countries that we're we're going into it as a phased rollout. So, um, if you're a merchant anywhere around the world, you know, uh, look us up. It's really easy to to get onboarded with Humble. It's um, you know, I think a great cost savings to you if you're just taking cash or, or coins, especially coming out of COVID with the need for contactless uh, technologies. So, um, you know, do, do look us up if you're a merchant, because I think we can help you uh, join the digital economy very, very quickly. Um, if you're a consumer, just, you know, if you download the app, um, please tell us how we can improve, what features you want to see. I want to load this thing up. You know, we did not talk to a single consumer under 40 that said they wanted fewer features in the application. So um, I'm pushing our teams like crazy to get, get that going. And um, we also have some amazing new hires in our mobile division. So um, you'll, you'll see some changes on our website, um, you know, to the team. Uh, I didn't get time to put the logos of all the people um, that we hired and where they're coming in from and, and this sort of thing. So we'll, we'll do some funding updates in the next couple of days and we'll do some hiring updates in the next couple of days of people from Twitter and Walmart and just, just amazing platforms that, of people who are proven veterans that join us on the path. Um, so, so we'll get that, you know, kind of scrubbed out again. It's just, like I said at the beginning of the call, it's just, we're entering a different phase of the business. So, you know, we miss our, miss our flooring company, but it's, it's time. So, okay. So stage, stage one is uh, point and pay. You know, this is the ability again, find a merchant, pay a merchant, tip a merchant, tip, you know, rate and review, um, buy a ticket, um, get an offer. Uh, so, so again, point and pay peer to peer is more complex. We really need to be thoughtful about which providers we're doing that with. Um, you know, there's these amazing elastic grids that are being built out globally. Um, and we think just like the cell phone companies did, we have a really strong opportunity, you know, just like a Verizon comes in over the top of these, um, these mesh grids, we want to do the same thing with digital payments with Humble. So we're working on that. Um, it took us a while to do our US FBO banking relationship. Uh, so that was a little bit, you know, for someone like me, who's not particularly patient at times of getting things to market. Um, but, you know, we're there and certainly in discussions uh, to move that forward pretty quickly. And, and certainly we have world-class um, partners that, that are ready to serve us um, into these markets and serve our customers together and our merchants. So again, the goal is if you send money and you're receiving it, you know you have the ability to go somewhere and spend that digital form of cash, either in the form of what you've received or as these countries migrate uh, to digital forms of money, 
um, which, you know, as I say, China's first in, first in the door, but uh, we just see it coming down the path for over 100 countries. And we want people to be able to know that if, they, if their countries move to forms of digital dollars or if the sender is mo moving to a digital form of, of sending money, that they'll be taken care of on the other side and they can spend that money at the merchant layer, which is, you know, how we all get groceries and book tickets and, and do stuff. So that's the end state. Okay, so here, here's sort of the launch factory uh, components here. So um, role one would be United States, Canada, Mexico, Australia, New Zealand, and Singapore. Um, so that'll be launching on Friday. Um, so that, what's the date on that? That's the 16th. So Friday the 16th, we will be launching uh, Discover, Pay, Tip, Rate, Review, ticketing and offers in these countries. So we'll be testing it out, seeing how it goes, give us your feedback quickly. We'll you know, obviously be seeking to improve the product really rapidly. If you're a merchant, sign up for it. I know we've been pre-populating a ton of stuff on there. So thanks to everybody in the back office. Um, you know, data input, not, not fun, but um, thanks to everybody in the back office. You, you know, even our executive team is mopping the floors and turning out the lights. So um, thanks for that. Uh, roll, roll two, like phase two, um, will be a lot of the European uh, environment. So hopefully, you know, we can get out there very quickly as well. Um, you know, on a personal level, I hope to be in some of these regions uh, in the spring or the summertime and, and to get off the plane and see Humble in some windows and, and on some counters. So, um, so let us know how we can move faster in your region. Um, I'm sure, you know, uh, Michelle and Jenny and, and, and Karen and others and are setting up, you know, environments for for everybody to submit um, what they would need to do to be to be merchants. So we'll make sure we tweet out that information. And you know, if you need something, let us know. We'll get you, you know, stickers, QR codes, you know, whatever it takes to get humble humble out there in these environments, so you can accept, um, you know, contactless travel or payments this summer instead of cash. And then lastly, Brazil, India, Hong Kong, Japan, and Malaysia. Um, we have a nice partnership that's sort of been purring in place with Bexis Brazil. Uh, we really like those folks. We see a lot of tokenization opportunity with them. So we hope to revisit that as the world opens back up again. I know um, some of these corridors have been hit by COVID really, really hard, you know, as were we last year and, and still. Um, so, you know, as soon as the world opens up to our, to our travel, um, you know, we're, we're going to be down there and activating these things um, in these corridors. So, um, we'll, we'll get there hopefully really quickly. I, I just got my second, second shot. So I'm, I'm looking to get back up in the air here pretty soon. Um, okay. Second division, humble financial, uh, again, just trying to make digital asset investing as simple as possible. You know, we see the next generation as, you know, hunting new asset classes. They're super interested in NFTs. They're super interested in digital assets. You know, it's not just, you know, stocks and bonds and dividends anymore. So we want to serve, serve the customer uh, really well in this zone. And I think we're a pace setter in that regard. Um, so we, we launched some things, you know, a couple of weeks ago that I'm proud of just because we, you know, had been working on them in the lab for a year and um, wanted to try to get them out there. So thanks again to, you know, Jacob and Calvin and the others who are just doing really complex, cool work, Adam. Um, you know, and so on. Uh, we're we're going to be bolstering our blockchain teams a lot um, with hires and so on as we as we take in some money. So uh, help help coming to to some of our blockchain guys that are working overtime. So um, we'll we'll hire the best blockchain people in the world to help them out. And uh, I'm I'm looking at resumes as we speak. So send send them in. We're actually a fun place to work. Um, so. Okay, the whole goal is to try to get this into one click for the customer. Like right now, you know, there's there's friction buying our ETXs. It's just, it's it's not ideal. You know, I think we did really cool stuff in terms of layering on top of a Coinbase, which, you know, is an amazing company. And um, we're just proud to be able to, you know, port the tell the customer, hey, go sign up on a Coinbase, go sign up on a Binance, go sign up on a Bittrex. Um, you know, those exchanges all have great, KYC and AML um, programs. And, um, you know, so, so we, we have no issue partnering with exchanges. In fact, it's, you know, where everybody's bread is buttered in terms of, you know, liquidity and so on. I think in terms of as a customer, you want to know you have liquidity and good service and, um, you know, nice regulatory and compliance environments, you know. So, so we've partnered with Best of Breed in this regard. Um, but our hope would be to continue to partner even more deeply 
um, with these liquidity lakes, sort of view them as plugins behind each module that you see there, um, where the, you know, um, the creation and redemption of this asset, the immediate one click buy and sell would be, would be placed for you in, in one modality. So that's really our goal. It's called a kind of a more of a custodial environment or an exchange cloud, if you will, that needs to plug in behind it. Um, so, so we're studying right now really quickly how we can get these into, you know, creation and redemption blocks that would enable you to, to move much faster as an investor in a synthetic environment. We want everything we do at Humble to ultimately get down to being one click. So, you know, it was funny, I was reading um, Top Shots, NBA stuff, you know, amazing what they're doing um, with taking the NBA on blockchain. I saw $2 billion of NFTs in the first quarter, more buyers than sellers. It's, it's just nuts. It's very dot com, late 90s dot com-ish uh, in terms of some things. And I think, you know, the, the bigger sort of marketplaces, curated marketplaces will win really big on top of those individual silos. Um, but what I read was that the punt rate on people, if they said you're doing this on the blockchain, that they had a 400% better conversion rate if they removed the word blockchain from the purchase of an NBA top shot. So I thought that was just kind of a shame because they it is being done on blockchain. So um, again, we continue to position to the market. We want to be a leader in mid-market packaging of the blockchain, just like the FANG stocks allowed you to, you know, Facebook allowed you to post a picture and comment on the internet. You know, Netflix allowed you to consume more elastic layers of content, more curated layers of content. Um, you know, the, these things weren't particularly net new. They just packaged it well and, you know, gave people the ability to understand it in um, really intelligent, intelligent bits. So what, I, what I'm saying to the market is basically, you know, you have these sort of core units of processing measure that accompany tech cycles. You have minutes for cell phones. The customer understands megabytes for data. So, you know, when you start to see blocks as this unit of measure of blockchain, don't be scared. I mean, your data is actually uh, more secure and more encrypted uh, than it was if it was not on the blockchain potentially. So, um, so I, I think, you know, our, our road to hoe at Humble is to make sure the customer feels really comfortable in the mid market um, engaging with the blockchain because it's an elegant technology and um, it's something we'd like to, to try to be an Amazon of assets for. So what we built was a token engine. What we did is we studied the way Amazon harnessed all those little dot coms in the late 90s, you know, um, and, and put it over the top. And what they did is they built out a vendor central platform where anyone with sort of, you know, modest tech literacy could come on and be an online merchant quite quickly and have a tool set of a plus content or, you know, product detail pages, um, performance metrics about how they're doing on the storefront. Um, so we see that same opportunity with what we've developed with our token engine, our blocks token engine. So um, we really see an opportunity there. You know, this can plug in in, in a limitless amount of places. So um, we've had conversations with large media conglomerates that might want to just tuck this in behind their content uh, to do NFTs or to do some other tokenized behavior to give people you know, the ability to buy their portion, um, a one of one or a five of five of, of whatever they want to do. Um, you know, we think some movies will outpace what they did gross at the box office just by slicing themselves up at in 15 seconds as, as NFTs or multimodal NFTs. So there's a lot of opportunity there, um, you know, for our token engine. And, and we'll be, you know, certainly putting that to work in a very curated sort of gallery versus theme park environment. Uh, on our own marketplace. So it's something that, again, you know, with blockchain, I think some, one of the things that's confusing for people is you have this sort of continuum of stuff that blockchain can wrap around. And as long as you just step back and look at the tokenization layer and not the asset it's, in, it's holding, it gets easier to understand, you know? So anything that's a media catalog, a physical asset, you know, you can fractionalize and tokenize real estate, media, content. You're going to see entire movie films that get chopped up and fractionalized, you know, and, and will literally outpace what they did at the box office. There's just so many 15 second clips or album covers that I can think of that, you know, um, I'd like to, to try to buy or sell or list on our marketplace for the, uh, for the consumer. So lastly, we are building an NFT marketplace. It's, it's actually further along. Um, you know, than, than I thought we would be at this time. Um, so I'm very pleased with that. Our goal is to start fewer, bigger, better. Um, so thanks to the team that's been grinding on that. Um, I, I've actually been 
able to be a CEO for the last week and go and talk to people I never thought I'd be meeting. Um, so thanks to some of the folks in sport and entertainment and so on that, you know, we've had some late nights. They do not keep normal hours. Um, however, you know, we've had some meaningful discussions about what digital content can be, you know, and artists and athletes and so on. They want to own their own content. They want to digitize their catalog. You know, the, the millennial and Gen Z consumer is saying, I, I don't need it to be printed out or a hard asset for it to be meaningful to me on a cost basis. So um, we think that, you know, assets migrate to digital formats and, um, and that we'll be there to serve that. So again, gallery, not a theme park, growth through partners. I would be just fine with some of the partners we're potential partners we're talking to um, doing darn near close to exclusives on some of these verticals. So um, we've had incredible conversations with amazing people that have done great creative work, um, either historically or currently or in the future. And they just wanna take more control of, of their catalog and monetize it better in digital environments. You know, um, you, you watch brick and mortar just get eviscerated by Amazon. And I think the same thing happens here to, you know, some of the analog content houses that just haven't done much to digitize for their artists and athletes. So I think you'll see a lot of artists, athletes, entertainers, um, and so on, taking more control of their personal brand earlier in life um, and being able to monetize that through um, these sort of NFTs that have, you know, unique value, one of ones, unlocks, five of fives. We've talked to people about, you know, creating time lock behavior where they would get a recurring royalty every time it, it sells. So we're doing some really cool if then stuff um, in this. And again, we're not going to just do this free for all theme park deal. I mean, this is going to be really curated. Um, we will have very strong relationships with the people we're working with from a partnership perspective. Um, I'm sure you saw us doing some stuff already with the Major League Baseball guys, um, not, not as an organization, Major League Baseball, but people who play Major League Baseball, um, you know, that, that become shareholders and humble and um, so on. You know, we're finding athletes and artists and, and entertainers prefer stock to cash, which is cool. Um, and they get great splits on this stuff. So there's really not a lot to lose out there. Um, the one acquisition I am really hunting is a studio uh, type of play. So we've had some calls the last couple of days with um, some studios, creative studios that do a lot of the trailers that you would recognize and a lot of the multimodal content you would see in sports leagues, hype videos and stuff. So I do have my eye on putting the stock to work uh, on getting a creative studio, Hollywood grade studio in-house because we're learning that the generation of this content is as important as our ability to tokenize and list it. So if we can create, tokenize and list uh, as a one-stop shop, I think we'll win, win pretty big. So again, we kind of elicited some of these test behaviors. I put a note out to some of the people that receive these photos. So I don't think it just ends in the digital environment. You know, sometimes you'll buy an NFT and you get a dinner with that person or you get to go to the studio lot or we mail you a authenticated photograph in the mail from the photographer, you know, there'll be some things on it. So we started to do some testing around that. Um, big thank you to some of the guys we're working with uh, uh, in Latin America and the Caribbean uh, out of Major League Baseball. You know, we know uh, some of the agents and players there and these guys are super cool and up for stuff. So we're working on things, you know, being really thoughtful about legal and, you know, media rights. I think every photographer should try to figure out how they can get their stuff pulled down and, and have it be used in an NFT. I think that's really important. You know, I'm sure Getty and those guys are talking about what they can do there. Um, so we're really being thoughtful about, you know, how we do content where the legal side of it sits with the photographers taken care of, you know, the, the media shops taken care of, the athletes taken care of very well um, and so on. So we, we're we being very thoughtful about that before we do anything live in the market um, from a licensing perspective. And then lastly, this convergence in ticketing, you know, I, I tweeted a couple of weeks ago that I thought mobile pay and ticketing and NFTs were all going to converge into one thing. So I think people are starting to understand even better why we picked up a a ticketing business, you know, it, it, I would be disappointed if, if the tickets we issue are not commemorative NFTs, you know, the, the need to go home and post a ticket on your wall, a hard ticket on your wall, it, it's just not as um, visceral for the younger consumer, they'd much rather show you, you know, over a bite to eat what they've collected in their phone and so on. So we really believe that the good tickets, you know, will be multimodal and, and NFT um, quality in terms of their collectibles. So we're already starting to, to do some things with, with Tickery as a co-branded 
environment and nice to see people back out uh, back out there in the world. Um, so we'll be, you know, thinking about how to do that within a contactless fan experience. You know, we think, again, you know, we're pretty spoiled in the U.S., but man, you you go out to these other areas uh, of the world that are still, you know, cash dependent or whatever. And, and we just think there's such an awesome opportunity to get into stadiums, festivals, concerts, do amazing NFT tickets and authenticate secondary ticketing markets on the blockchain. Um, you know, that that's an amazing just line of business for us. It's you think about you know, no offense, but a Craigslist or some kind of open, open sort of posting environment where, you know, there's been some, some horror stories about transactions gone wrong offline. You know, we really think that, um, you know, contactless authenticated blockchain ticketing has huge opportunities as, as do NFT collectibles. Um, okay. So just summarizing what, what we said and we'll say it again. And, and again, thanks for tuning in. You know, we're obviously very serious about our business, but um, you know, we, we are also a startup and really thankful that you guys are um, with us for the, for the ride. We're certainly putting in the work. So um, Humble Financial uh, launched, I believe, 4-2. We're in over 100 countries. Again, moving to one-click custodial as fast as possible. Like, I want you to be able to come into Humble, buy an ETX with one click, and come back in five years and see how you did. So that, that's our goal. Um, and thanks for your feedback uh, to customer service and so on about our non-custodial products. They're, unfortunately, it's, yeah, they're actually more complex to do, to do those products than, than the custodial ones. So um, we're looking forward to getting fewer, bigger, better, simpler products out to the customer when we have that, that regulatory capacity and, and some capital discussions we're having about that as well. Um, Humble Pay, we're gonna start that phase rollout uh, on, on Friday of this week. So that'll be super exciting. If you're in one of the nations that we're rolling out into, give us a holler. Um, you know, we know people in all those countries and, and, we, and we have many, many uh, beloved friends in those countries that we haven't been able to see for a long time. So thanks to everybody that's helping us with the ground game uh, in those countries. Let us know how it, how it rolls out and how we can improve quickly. Um, and then lastly, the NFTs. I'll talk about that a bit more on CNBC tomorrow. Um, but just, you know, I, I went up to Silicon Valley in my mid 20s and my CEO had been through the late 90s and he said, be ready for yes. You know, and what he meant was like, you know, you can push on both sides of the doorframe all you want about a market that you think is there. And just one day the market finds the handle and you walk right in. And, and that's been been our situation over the last few weeks is this Amazon for assets, NFTs concept is just, it's amazing how much opportunity there is out there. And so we've tried to be ready for yes as best we can, um, rapidly scaling both our blockchain support teams and then also our creative studio capacity. So uh, we'll be working on that. And, and I think that dovetails instantly uh, into, the, into the ticketing business. Um, okay, so last thing, uh, completed the reverse merger. Uh, we pursued M&A and country rights, secured that with the Chile test, um, which is fantastic. Those guys are amazing and they're just gonna open up the whole LATAM corridor for us. Um, launched Humble Financial, got our ticker. So thanks for, for riding with us through the, through the flooring company. And, and again, just kind of entering a new fresh phase of the business now. Um, with people and, and kind of the products that we're rolling out in that. So it's been fun for this sort of crawl phase of the journey. And now we're into the walk phase before we run. Um, so Q2 will be the mobile app. We, we roll some of that out. Uh, Humble Financial, of course, we rolled out in the U.S. Um, so look for our ad campaigns, campaigns around the world there. Um, we'll, we're driving really quickly to peer to peer. Um, the ticketing integration is actually already in there. So we're ahead of schedule on that. Um, and NFT listings, I, I you know, keep an eye out on that one. I'm not going to give you a hard date because it's some of it is based on who we announce with with those those midnight discussions are going on right now. Um, and then Q3 will go, you know, growth in key verticals, um, strategic partnerships, custodial tokenization, meaning just removing the friction that you experience signing up for our products. You know, again, I really appreciate I think the ETX are a great product. I'm, I'm really proud of them. And I, you know, I think they've they've done well for the customer so far. Um, but I think, you know, the more custodial and one click we can get, the better um, in these sort of blocks, units of measure for the blockchain. Um, and then lastly, I think, you know, we still we're still doing the, the shareholder conference. I, I think, you know, we're very you know, hopeful uh, that COVID will be alleviated by then and that we can all get together for 
for a drink uh, out here in, in San Diego or wherever we decide to do it. Um, I noticed there's a new sort of like fest, really cool white festival shelter down in San Diego where we could, you know, maybe put Humble on the top and bring in some a high profile artist or two or something. But so, so I'm kind of starting to noodle that and we'll do something awesome um, and looking forward to meeting everybody. So I'll do kind of like a hour or two presentation of what's coming up for the business in, in 22 and the year that was, and then we'll, we'll go have some fun. So, um, so thanks again for everybody uh, tuning in and um, you know, if you have questions, send them in and we'll try to get them answered and so on. So we'll post this material as always. So it's in a public format and I can talk a little more freely tomorrow on CNBC, but Thanks again for tuning in and, and we appreciate the time.